Hey guys, Proper English here, and today we're going to talk about multiplexers. So, multiplexers are insanely useful. I use them all the time and for tons of different applications. I've got a bunch that I've used recently lined up over here, and we're going to take a look at all of them, but right now you should ignore them, especially this funky looking monstrosity over here. It's ridiculous. Well, we'll get to that later. For now, let's answer the question, what is a multiplexer? And we'll do that using this simple design up here. So, a multiplexer takes two or more inputs and selects one of them as the output. Really simple concept, really useful and versatile concept. So let's turn the upper input on. So right now we're selecting the lower input. You can see the pathway for the lower input goes right to the output, but the upper one doesn't go there at all. Well, if we extend the piston, now the lower input's blocked and the upper input is the one that we have a pathway for. So it turns on. Well, let's, uh, let's change the state of this. So now we've got the lower one on. Well, the pathway's blocked. But the upper one, you know, that's the pathway we're selecting. So upper input's off, output's off. If we retract the piston, we're going to select the lower one. And there you go. So I've been talking about how versatile and useful uh, multiplexers can be. So let's, let's take a look at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a torch over here. And since we're in 1.3 now, we're going to use a fancy looking half slab up here and throw some redstone on it and take this and make it one input over here. So we're taking one input and we're splitting it and we're inverting the lower one. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so now what we've got is a quick and simple way to do an inversion. Pretty cool, right? And if... Uh, if I turn that on, well now the lower input's off, the upper one's on, because you know this whole thing's inverted. And there you go, we can select between the two. This is super useful. I've used this design a million times, and, uh, and yeah, I'm sure if you guys are getting into anything mathematical, or even things in games, or I mean, there are absolutely applications for this sort of a design in, in survival. It, it, it's just so useful in so many situations. So let's jump over here and take a look at this multiplexer. Now if you've watched my uh, my transparency videos, you've seen this before. This is from the transparency circuitry. This is, you know, I designed it for the transparency circuitry. And, uh, and so this one is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. If you haven't checked out the transparency videos, I highly recommend taking a look. I think it's a really cool concept. I'm insanely happy with how it turned out. It's pretty cool. I, I like it a lot. And uh, and yeah, so let's jump over here, get back to the multiplexes, and I'll stop plugging my uh, my other videos. And uh, and there we go. So now we've got a couple of these on, but we're really not selecting any of the inputs as an output right now. But we can change that. We'll select the one farthest from us. So I've got some fancy wiring up here that allows me to select just this last piston over here and extend it, and the output's on. But now if I turn this off, we can, uh, we can turn that one on. We're selecting the middle one now, but the middle one's off, so the output's off. And we can try one more. We'll do the one nearest to us. And yeah, there we go. One wide multiplexer. Pretty cool. Super useful, as, as I've shown you. In the, uh, in the videos that I just said that I was going to stop plugging. <laughs> so now we're sort of passing by this ridiculous thing over here. This wiring is just stupid. We're going to save that for last because it's just that stupid. All right, so what I've got here, you know, the multiplexers I've been showing you use pistons. Well, you can do it with just torches, too. And I've used this thing in a, uh, in a creation pretty recently as well. This one is another triple multiplexer, a two-wide stackable design. And it takes inverted inputs, that's why I've got this wall of torches over here. And let's leave the top row off, so that'll be a zero. And the middle one will go off, on, off, and then on. There we go. <laughs> and now for the lower one, let's do on, 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 and off. Just to, just to throw you guys off. You thought I was going to say on. All right, so now let's select the middle one. That one, you know, kind of looked cool. All right, so now it's off, on, off, on, just like we thought. And if you've been watching my binary, what is that? It's a five. You got it right. All right, so now let's uh, let's select the top one. So 
to zero. This one's easy. You can see that uh, that these torches up here are uh, are powering this torch over here. And well, now what's going on is this is uh, allowing any any of these that happen to be on uh, to actually be on. We can just take a quick look at that if I turn that one off. Well, now the uh, the torch is going to change its state based on whether or not I'm allowing it to be on. So right now it's keeping it off, and uh, and now it's on. And okay, so actually, what uh what is this gate? This over here, this is nor. So this is off, and this is off. And you know I've got these inverted here, but when I use this in a uh, in a circuit, normally what I would do is rather than having a torch right here, I would manipulate the logic that's controlling it so that that it's off without any extra delay. Okay, so let's uh, let's check that last one, and uh, actually I'll fix that. And so now. We'll select the last one. If you uh, you look over here, I've got this torch underneath, and it's being it gets held off by by this torch when it's on. When it's off, it lets it output. And what are we outputting? We're outputting a seven. So that's one, two, four, seven. Binary, not hard, very useful. And uh, and yeah, so let's take a look at at this stupidity over here. This thing is insane. It's cool. I'm calling it stupid, but it's actually kind of cool. I put this together when I built a floating point adder, and I'll do a video on the floating point adder at some point. It's it's pretty technical. It's pretty crazy, but I think you guys might appreciate it. Um, it's, a, it's an adder that allows you to, uh, to add very small and very large numbers, so kind of neat. This was the first part of the uh, the circuit. You know, the actual inputs to the adder would be over here, and uh, and what I needed to be able to do was to swap which input was on the top and on the bottom. So, uh, so let's let's put some inputs over here, and we'll uh, we'll check out what happens. So I'll put a six up top, and I'll put a nine on the bottom. All right. So in some situations, I wanted to be able to take the nine and put it up top and take the six and put it on the bottom. And so what I did was I used two multiplexers. So you can see this design should look familiar. It's the first one I showed you. And, uh, and yeah, so now what I can do is I can just flip this lever. Well, now nine is on the top, six is on the bottom. Quick, efficient, no extra delay stupid wiring. That's what it's all about. This is uh, this is multiplexing like a boss right here. And uh, and yes, yeah, so let's take a look at what I did. So what I did over here was I split the input. So now this one is coming up to the top multiplexer. But this uh, this branch down here sort of snakes around and goes down to the bottom multiplexer. Same thing with the bottom. So the bottom one has one that goes to the bottom multiplexer, but it also has one that sort of weaves in over here and goes up to the top multiplexer. And that's allowing me to select either the top or the bottom for in each position. So, so yeah, pretty cool, pretty ridiculous. Uh, at some point I'm going to do a tutorial on wiring because there's a lot that can be done with wiring and you can get really fancy as, as you can see right here. This is a two wide stackable design, um, which means that you know, the inputs and outputs can be uh, spaced to uh, one apart. So each each bit takes up uh, a space of two. And there's definitely overlap in here, as you can see. It's really convoluted and ridiculous. But, uh, but yeah, I'll teach you how to do that kind of stuff. All right, so now you know what a multiplexer is. You've seen a bunch of different types of multiplexers, and you've seen one ridiculous multiplexer with insane wiring and stuff that you'd never really want to do because it's just so stupid. <laughs> but it's fun. It's pretty cool. All right. So uh, I'm sure you guys are going to uh, to find all kinds of uses for multiplexers. You're probably plenty of uses that I'm not even thinking of. It's just so versatile. You can use it for so many different things. It's something you absolutely need to have in your toolbox because it's just that awesome. All right. 
So, uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys next time.